Greetings guys, gals and non-binary pals and welcome back to another video. I hope that you are well and I hope that you are fighting because there is a lot to be fighting for. As usual, there'll be a link in the description to the page on my website with a bunch of petitions, donations, emails to send to MPs, etc, etc. Now today, my hair is a little bit shorter and that is because I got Kat to cut it and I promise I will be dyeing it very shortly. Okay, so a few videos ago, I talked about this post that was all about what is expected of a woman, what a man wants. And I had a lot of people comment saying that that wasn't a quote from a man, that was a quote from the transformed wife. And from that, a lot of people were saying that I should do a video on her. So I thought that I would listen. And today we are going to be going through the transformed wife's Twitter because it is something else. It's just something else, really. And going through these people's Twitters is always very interesting. They're always such big hypocrites. Uh, so I thought we'd go through that and see what she has to say. Someone who goes through her account a lot is Jimmy Snow. Um, he's how I know about the transformed wife. So if you don't watch him, you should. His content's great. Uh, he has helped teach me a lot. He's actually the reason I make content like this. So go give him a watch. And he subscribed to me. So Jimmy, hi, if you're watching this, I love you. I've been watching your content for like two years. So thank you for subscribing. <laughs> anyway, before we get into it, please don't forget to subscribe. I'm coming up a quarter of a mil, which is absolutely freaking ridiculous. It's so wild. It's phenomenal. And I am so, so grateful. It would be really, really cool to hit 250k. So if you want to help me get there, hit the, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. You'll never miss a video. I'm here yelling about straight people and men all the time. <laughs> okay, let's, let's just, let's just get right into it, shall we? <laughs> Children need a mother and a father. Boys need fathers as a role model for masculinity. Girls need mothers as a role model for femininity. Boys and girls need mothers for the care and nurture mothers provide. They need fathers for the protection and security fathers provide. What I gather from the first half of that statement is that the best parents for girls is two mothers and the best parents for boys is two fathers, right? Women raise the best girls, men raise the best boys. So the solution to that is gay. And I, so you're kind of contradicting yourself there a little bit, aren't you? If you want women to grow up around women and be as womenly and feminine as possible, then surely two women would be better, no? Is that not what- is that not what you were saying there? As for the second half, they need fathers per, for protection. Have you heard the statement mama bear before? You know what happens when you like approach a mother's young, right? The mothers are usually the protectors in like all species. Mothers are the protectors, so I don't know where this father is protectors thing. And in terms of nurture, if your father isn't nurturing and loving towards you. He's not a very good father, really. That's really all I have to say about that. So what I'm getting from that is, uh, gay parents are the best parents and you just contradicted yourself a little bit and it didn't make any sense. So thank you for that. Um, moving on. Many women hate the thought of submitting to their husbands, but they quickly submit to the government when told to wear a mask and social distance and scold those who don't submit to the government. Therefore, submission is okay as long as it's not to their husbands. Submitting to a man means losing my independence and individuality because I'm being told I have to be something that I'm not and I have to do something that I don't want to do by a person that I'm choosing to spend time with. Wearing a mask means I'm not killing people. <laughs> if my partner said, hey, don't murder that person, then I would probably be like, okay, yeah, no, you're probably right. That is a bad idea. That's what a mask is. The government is telling you to wear a mask so you don't kill people. So I will listen to that. Just like if my partner says not to kill someone, I also wouldn't kill someone. That's not because my partner is telling me not to kill someone. That's just because I know that I shouldn't do that. So the government is saying, wear a mask, you'll stop killing people. I'm gonna wear a mask because I don't want to kill people. You know, it's just some basic common sense. And you say that as though we submit to the government constantly. Aren't you like the person who gets mad at like Black Lives Matter protests and things like that? You know, the active left fighting against the government, which we do 
constantly. We're constantly fighting against what the government is telling us. But you have a problem with that, right? You're picking and choosing things. We're constantly fighting against the government. We just listen in this one instance, but we're not even listening because the government is telling us to. We're doing it because that's what is the right thing to do. That's that's the whole thing, is we do the right thing. We, we do the thing that's going to help as many people as possible. You know? That's kind of... Basically what you're saying is you're selfish. That's... Yep, okay. <laughs> a message to women who are easily offended. Don't be. Life is a lot better if you focus on what needs to be changed in you rather than being offended easily and needing to be right all the time, as many women these days are. That's very rich coming from you. Isn't your entire thing being upset that women aren't doing what you want them to do? Is that not your thing? You're like, if you're offended by women who don't follow your belief system. So your entire life is is telling women to follow your belief system. That's, that seems like a pretty offended move, if you ask me. Why don't you focus on yourself, Lori? Why don't you focus on what needs to be changed within you? Stop being offended by what everyone else is doing and live your life. <laughs> I'm just trying to get on with it and live my life the way that I want to live it. And I'm being told by people that I'm not allowed to do that. And it's incredibly frustrating. So as soon as you stop telling me what to do, I'll stop complaining about it. And I'll stop yelling at you and telling you to shut up. Because it's very annoying. You're getting in the way. I'm trying to change myself and become the best version of myself. And you're not letting me do it. So I'm going to be upset with you. Yeah, let me work on myself. You're telling me to work on myself, so I will. But you're not involved in that. This isn't your life. So back out. Focus on yourself and stop being offended by what I choose to do. Please read your tweet back over itself and read it every day until you understand the words that you said. When women give themselves sexually before marriage, they are being used by a man. This is not love. Love is commitment, not lust. Young women need to be warned of this. There can be serious consequences from a result of fornication. If you're talking about casual hookups here, we know, we know that we're being used. But the catch here is, Laurie, we are using them too, right? We're using each other. If it's been agreed upon that, hey, we're just having sex. Cool. We're using each other. <laughs> we're just in it for that one purpose. We are just bodies to one another. That's chill. That's fine. If that's the agreed upon arrangement, no one thinks that it's love. We're not delusional. I'm not here like, yes, hello, boy. We are going to hook up. And then that means that you love me. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. We are very, very well aware of this. It is possible to have an arrangement in which you were using one another. Or sometimes women use men. I don't know why you think that men are only using women. Women enjoy sex too. I don't know if you knew that. Just because your husband doesn't pleasure you doesn't mean that we don't get pleasure. Maybe your husband's just a bit shit in bed. I don't know. I'm sorry if that's the case, which I'm willing to bet that it is. <laughs> but if you're talking about like before marriage as in in a relationship, I really just want to know what changes before and after marriage. You sign a piece of paper and you have a party. I feel like that doesn't change the level of love you have for one another. It's exactly the same. It's this day and then it's this day. And the thing that happens between the two is you sign a piece of paper and you have a party. Nothing else changes. Why does it make a difference if you have sex on this day or this day? What, what changed? Nothing, literally nothing changed. So I don't understand. Saving sex to a marriage makes no sense to me. If that's what you wanna do, go for it, I guess. But I do not understand it at all. It makes no sense. If you want to have sex, why you not? Like if you both want to have sex and are just not, I don't, why? I don't understand. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me at all. Why do I focus so much on teaching women to be keepers at home? Because it's impossible to be a good wife, mother, and homemaker if you're not home. If God thinks it's important that I teach women to be keepers at home, then it's important. When did you have a conversation with God? When did God come to you and say, Lori? I would like you to go on Twitter and yell at women for not following my exact words that I'm about to tell you and only you right now. 
No, no, that never happened. I am willing to bet that that never happened. <laughs> How do you know what God specifically wants of you? When did this conversation happen? There are a lot of people who follow God, who, who have faith and believe very differently to you. Why are you the one who is right? Why do you get to decide that God spoke to you? What about that person over there who said God spoke to them? How do you know that? How, listen, <laughs> don't understand. Just live your life. Just live your life. Believe in what you want to believe in. But like, don't use that to overrule what everyone else believes in. I believe in my own freedom and independence and I don't believe in your God. So I don't care what he has to say about my life. <laughs> and why do you care? Why do you care what your God thinks of me? Why do you care if I go to hell? I don't know why that matters. Just like l focus on yourself. Why do you care what happens to everyone else? Just let us live. Ugh. Feminism has caused women's dream to be having a career and being successful instead of being a wife and mother at home. So now they're upset if their husband interfere with their dream. Divorce is rampant and children are suffering as a result. Divorce is rampant because we don't want to be with people that we don't love. Yeah? If you fall out of love with someone or there's like toxicity within the relationship where you just don't get along with someone anymore, why would you want to stay with them? Children suffer more in households where two parents hate each other than they do with their parents living separately. I wish my parents had separated when I was younger. <laughs> they separated when I was quite young. We have a very complicated situation though. My parents have been separated for 13 years and my dad still lives in the same house. It's a mess. <laughs> it's complicated. A lot of people aren't in that situation. But anyway, a lot of people have parents that divorce and they're much better off having parents that are separated than having parents who are together and learning a really toxic idea of what a relationship is. Yeah? It's much more harmful to be in a household where two people can't stand each other than it is to have two loving parents separately. Children aren't suffering because of divorce. Some children, yes, some children do. But ultimately, a lot of people, when they're older and they reflect on that, realize that it was better that they were separated than if they were together. And you say like, you know, divorce is rampant now. It never used to be. People never used to get divorced. And that's because they couldn't. Like in the world that you want to live in, right? Women couldn't work. Women couldn't earn money. They couldn't live without a husband. You needed a husband in order to be able to live. And men took advantage of that and abuse was rampant. Women were abused constantly. And I mean, that's not to say we still aren't. Obviously domestic violence is still a very big issue, but back then it was legal firstly, and it was just very, very common practice and women couldn't leave. There was no option to leave because where were they gonna go? But now you can, and now you can do what's best for you and you can take care of yourself and hopefully it teaches more people to not take advantage of their partners. You can't just mistreat and abuse someone because they will leave. But I do, however, have a solution for the high divorce rate. I have a solution for it. Are you ready to hear it? Don't get married. If everyone stopped getting married, if marriage just ended and no one got married anymore, divorce rate would be 0%. No one would be getting divorced because no one would be married. I solved the problem. I solved it. You're welcome. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I think I'm going to leave it there for today. Uh, I know this has been a bit of a shorter video. I hope that that's okay. I am very tired at the moment. My mental health is not incredible. So I'm trying to take it a bit easy and I wanna be able to give you 100%. And if I do long videos at the moment, I don't know if I'm going to be able to give you 100%. So we're going for a little bit of a shorter one. Don't forget, by the way, that I have merch. These are, all my merch is sustainable and fair trade. There's some weird issues with shipping at the moment. So some of the items are only available in certain countries. So please select the ones that are for your country. It's really hard to find things that are like sustainable and fair trade. So what I found is really all there is. And sometimes they don't, ship to different countries. So that's why it's like the way that it is. I've had a few people ask. I think that's it for today. If you want me to do another one of these, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to go through her Twitter again and find some more stuff because she says a lot. 
<laughs> she says a lot of things and I have many thoughts. A big thank you to my Kiwi Fruit channel members whose names are up on the screen right now. And a huge thank you to my channel member of the day, Noah. I love and appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so, so much for joining. If you would like to become a channel member, you can click the top link in the description or the little blue join button. You get my videos a day early as well as 10% off my merch at thequeerkiwi.com slash shop. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, The Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, That Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe and keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. When you close your eyes